and welcome to my Canadian viewers, both of you. Hey, there you are. Pay attention, please, because this is very important. Now, as you know, as most people know, the rules regarding drones have changed in Canada. On June the 1st, new rules came into effect. And I've already done a video talking about how they affect these little craft, which weigh less than 250 grams. But now I'm going to talk about those of you who fly larger quads, like Phantoms, Mavics, Sparks, things that weigh more than 250 grams, but less than 25 kilograms, because the new rules mainly, well, they affect, basically all affect you. And how do they affect you? Well, as you're probably already aware, you've got to register, you've, you've got to sit an online competency exam. There's a lot of things you've got to do. So I'm not going to go over that. Now, you can get that information anywhere on the internet. There'll be 101 talking heads like me telling you what you can and can't do. What I'm going to tell you is the stuff that you're probably not quite aware of, not so aware of, things that the other videos and articles may have glossed over. Because these are very important things. Uh, because these are the things that will trip you up if you get into trouble. So let me tell you the things that you need to know about. All right, first of all, you're going to need to go and buy yourself a couple of notebooks or, a couple, or you know, just booklets that you can write in because you're going to have to keep some logs, keep some logs. And I'm not talking about being a lumberjack, I'm talking about making notes on paper. Or you could use your smartphone, you can type stuff into your smartphone, but you know, generally speaking, people, authorities like to see stuff on paper with real ink. So get yourself a couple of notebooks, and one of them will be called your flight log. The other will be called your maintenance log. And, and I, I don't know why Transport Canada have done this, but they have taken basically procedures from the manned aviation world and just thrown them at unmanned aviation and said, do that, because, for no real purpose. And because we're talking, you know, it's often about small craft that are weighing, you know, like a Phantom, what is it, 1.3 kilos. It's not a big thing. It's not going to cause a lot of damage to anyone, but you've got to, you've got to, let me tell you what you've got to do. You've got to do a flight log. What's your flight log going to contain? Well, basically, I've made some notes so that I'll be able to tell you. Right, in your flight log, every time you fly, you have to make a note of the time and the date and the location and the names of the people who were with you when you flew. That's your crew. That's if you're flying FPV, that's your spotter, the person that was looking out to make sure you weren't going to crash into tall buildings and flying superheroes. Um, you need to keep all this information for every flight or every group of flights that you do. So that means every time you go out to the park with your mates, you've got to write down your mate's name, you've got to write down the park you're at, you've got to write down the flights, the time and date of the flights you had. Seriously, honestly, I'm telling you, this is what you have to do. It's in the rules. In fact, it's in section 901.48 brackets 1. Go and look for yourself. Unbelievable. So you'll need to do that, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Now, the other thing is you've got to keep a maintenance log. So you've got your little quad heavier than this one, and you break a propeller. No, you've got to make a note in your maintenance log that you change the propeller. You've got to uh, put the time, the date, who did the repair, which is probably going to be you, the manufacturer's part, description and so forth, so that you can be tracked back who, you know, what sort of part it was. And if there's any instructions, if you've got instructions in the manual that tell you how to change propeller, you've got to include a copy of those instructions in your maintenance log so that the powers that be can see that you've done it properly. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's anything, even as simple as changing a propeller, you've got to do that. You broke a battery strap. Sorry, you've got to do that. Um, that's the lunacy that is the Transport Canada rules for small remotely piloted aircraft systems. So, and I'll tell you why, you know, you might think nah, you, no one will ever check for that. Well, don't count on it. I've dealt with powers that be on a lot of occasions. And you're right, 99% of the time, the people who might, you know, the police officer might stop you and ask what you're doing. He doesn't give a damn whether you've got a flight log or a maintenance log. But on the one occasion, you strike someone who thinks that there's no point in having power if you can't abuse it, or if someone takes a dislike to you, or you've got to defend yourself against authority, you'll have to produce those logbooks. And you'll probably have to produce them. It's handy if you can produce them on the spot. So if you carry those notebooks around, first thing you do on Monday, go out, buy these two notebooks, and start filling them in. Fill them in for a little while, you know, just so it looks like you're doing it, right? No one's going to look too closely. Just, you know, change the propeller, um, replace the battery strap for your maintenance log, and on your flight log, put in some of your last three or four flights. So, yeah, there you go. So that if you are stopped and someone's been a real asshole and says, show us your logs, you can show it to them. And that kind of diffuses the situation. But if you don't have those, $1,000 fine each. <laughs> Seriously, honestly, it can get very expensive if you don't follow the regulations. So, yeah, just do it. Do it. Because I don't think a lot of people even realise this is a requirement under the regulations. But the way I read it, it really is. So that's one thing you've got to do. And there are other things, though, which you may not be aware of, like... Um, you, where well, I've made a note here, hold on a minute, yeah, it, the registry itself, now you've got to register your drones, okay, so you go in and you put it in and get a number and you put it on your drone, but 
It's not as simple as that. That's just the start of the process. For example, if you lose your drone, you've got to go and update your entry in the registry. So this drone has been lost, so it can be deregistered. If you have it, uh, if you sell a drone, you've got to do the same thing. If you um, decide not to use your drone anymore, you've got to go and deregister it because, or list the status as unused. Every time, every time something changes in respect to your drone, you've got to update the registry. And if you change address, let's say you move house, You've got seven days to update that information in the registry or $1,000 fine. So there's a lot of the huge burdens placed on drone operators now. And a lot of people just don't realize this. Did you even stop and think if I move house, will I have to update my entry in the drone registry? No, you didn't think that, did you? But you have to. It's the law. And there are severe penalties if you ignore the law. And as I say, if someone wants to make an example of you, you can get really expensive really quickly. You don't have a maintenance log. You don't have a flight log. You haven't updated your registry entries. A lot of money, a lot of money if someone chooses to really be an, an arsehole. So yeah, make sure you do that. And even simple stuff like, you know, you've been out on the tiles on Saturday night. You think, oh, I'm going to have a fly Sunday morning. Well, you can't legally fly within 12 hours of consuming alcohol. So if you were out on the tiles until one o'clock in the morning, you're not going to be able to fly legally until one o'clock the next afternoon. And if you didn't get much sleep that night, you're a bit tired, but under the weather, sorry, you can't fly. You're not allowed to fly if you are fatigued. It's in the regulations and you know, it's terrible. But it, it, let me go on further, things you probably didn't know. If you're flying your model and you have a bit of a longer flight than you expected and the battery goes flat, $1,000 fine. Because it says in the regulations, if you look at section 901.28 brackets A, you must ensure that your craft has sufficient energy to, to fly, to complete its flight, which means enough fuel in the case of a, a nitro glow motor or enough battery in the case of an electric model. And if the battery goes flat, you have broken that regulation, $1,000 fine. So yeah, um, the, 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 the trivia, the minutiae of the detail where you can easily come a cropper and be subject to really big penalties is amazing. And so you need to familiarize yourself with all this. That's the reason I'm making this video, not to tell you about the, the basics of, of the rules, but some of the details that will catch you out unless you are very, very careful. But let's keep looking at the lunacies, shall we? Let's say you're coming in to land and you misjudge it and you hit a fence, okay? Hit a fence. Section 901.33 brackets A, $1,000 fine. <laughs> you must not hit obstacles with your models. No, you're not allowed to. It's against the law <laughs> to do that now. Oh, so yeah, crashing is forbidden, effectively. At least crashing into obstacles is forbidden. And if you are flying in the winter, you make sure there's no snow or ice on your model. After every landing, you have to wipe it clean. And I don't know what happens if you've got wheels and you roll through a patch of snow on takeoff and you've got ice on your wheels. Section 901.35 brackets two, thousand dollar fine. Yeah, but as I say, this is all pretty academic. For most people, it's academic. If you fly safely and responsibly, and you don't piss people off with your model flying, then you're probably not going to have to worry about any of this. Um, unless the authorities come out on fishing expeditions, which they can do, they might, they might have a blitz. They might decide, oh, we're going to have a blitz against these drone operators. So they might say to all the police, every time you see a drone, stop them, ask to see their flight logs, their, their maintenance logs, their registration, their competency certification, and all that sort of stuff. Then if they do that and you don't have that, you're in trouble. That's what pays to play it safe and make sure you've got the stuff in place ahead of time. Um, so, but the rest of the time, you're pretty safe. So don't, don't make an arse of yourself. And if you're still worried, if you still think, man, I don't want to do a flight log. I don't want to have to keep track of all my flights. I don't want to have to write down every time I change a propeller or something. Because the, the, way, I, the way I personally fly, I'd run out of notebooks in no time. There'd be a big demand on the world's paper production for a start. If you really think it's that bad, get one of these. Go sub 250, sub 250. It's the future of the hobby, certainly in Canada. And even if you do have larger drones and you, you go through all this rigmarole and you do it all legally and you dot your I's and cross your T's, get something like this anyway, because it will remind you of what you've lost. It will remind you that there was a time when you could actually fly models of all sizes, shapes and types without these lunatic, ridiculous restrictions that Transport Canada has placed on you if your model weighs more than 250 grams. The days when you didn't need a flight log or a maintenance log. The days when it wasn't illegal to crash into a tree. <laughs> All those things. Yeah, they were great days. They disappeared on the 1st of June this year. Unless you're flying these. Anyway, so if you're a Canadian, then uh, you're welcome to keep an eye on this channel because I'm doing the build, yes I am, the build video for the sub 250 gram FPV model. Because as I said in my other video, 
You can do anything you like with it. You can fly beyond visual line of sight. You can fly to whatever altitude you want. You can fly near airports. You can fly near people and buildings and cats and cows and everything like that because there's no prescriptive rules. The only rule is don't endanger person or aviation. As long as you're not doing either of those, none of the other rules apply. So freedom, that's what I say. Anyway, thank you for your time to watching this video. If you're new to the channel, if you haven't watched this channel before, then go and have a look at all the back catalogue of videos I've got. There's bound to be something there that will really piss you off and you can write angry comments and troll in the comment section, which a lot of people do. So anyway, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Um, I'm Bruce Simpson. I have tried to do my best to explain the little things that'll catch you out with the Canadian drone rules. And I'll keep these videos, you know, as various countries change their rules, I do videos to try and help people out so I don't get in trouble. And I thank my Patreon supporters because they make it possible for me to do this. And if you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, that's fine. I'm not going to twist your arm. There are links in the description, however, for those that would like to support the channel. And it may not cost you a cent. So go and have a look down there in the descriptive bit. Thank you. Uh, go to the comment section now with your comments, your thoughts. Is this video, did I do a good job? Did I do a bad job? Have I got it wrong? Uh, um, are you going to go to 250 grams because you don't want all this risk and you know, overhead involved in flying larger craft. Tell me about it. I want to know. I want to know where the hobby's headed. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.